Hello, good evening, and welcome. I'm John Lazarus with Stories Matter and d &E Publishing. Action scenes might be the hardest scenes for most writers to write. While most of you have probably been drunk enough to have sex a few times in your lives, it's doubtful any of you have physically fought someone. As you are too obese and riddled with diabetes to join the military, too easily winded to chase down pickpockets, and you thin ones are too cowardly to stand up to the male masseuse demonstrating pressure points on your ex-wife's body. If a writer is supposed to write what they know, what's a limp-wristed, timorous, noodle-armed author to do? But don't worry, there are workarounds that won't force you to do push-ups, enlist, or spend a depressing afternoon in a VFW. We'll kick ass and run out of bubblegum on this edition of Stories Matter. Today's video is brought to you by Chloroform. Like leather messenger bags and 69ing in front of a fireplace, some things never go out of style. Chloroform is a must-have for the modern writer in today's workaday world. Whether in need of some emergency refrigerant, working on a proprietary pesticide, or giving cheap surgery to an uninsured family member, you'll be glad you had Chloroform. I personally keep three or four drams in my desk drawer to help with canker sores and to pass the time when I get bored. Call your local apothecary today to see if chloroform is right for you. Now, while the word action scene might conjure the image of John Wick killing three guys with some halogen light bulbs or a zither or something, it's essential to all types of fiction, and you can find it in classic romances, postmodern metafiction, and alternative psychology textbooks. Let's look at five rules to kick our readers not just in the ass, but in the brain and heart as well. Rule one, define your genre and your action scene's purpose. First, you have to decide what kind of action is gonna take place. Will this be a caravan of modded out death machines racing across the post-apocalyptic desert? Or will it be a quainter affair? For example, two proper Victorian women stripped nude trying to drown each other in a bog, like in my 2010 romantic thriller, Bride of Prejudice. If you're a screenwriter, you'll pretty much have to write about superheroes, so make sure the superheroes and the rules are clearly defined. You might have to explain why, for example, your indestructible hero doesn't just use his laser vision to sever the spines of all 12-year-old street hoodlums in his city. And secondly, you have to give a reason for this chase, this fistfight, or this orphanage explosion to occur. The justification can be simple. Maybe, like my dad, your protagonist just gets belligerently angry when he drinks. Maybe your government official drops bombs on another country because he thinks it'll get him a better job. Or maybe, like in my close friend Blake Colby's Bloodshot, the fistfight starts because the character accidentally wears a t-shirt disparaging the Thai royal family. Rule 2. Avoid realism. Focus on feeling, not description. Action in real life is often very anticlimactic. You might, for example, set bear traps beneath your windowsills after your agent demands you return a manuscript you stole from his office, only to have the police come to your house to confiscate them after getting a call from a concerned clerk at the hardware store. You don't want to bog down your action scenes with lots of description and explanation. Here's a great way to titillate your reader from my 1997 action thriller, Addressing in Disguise. Susan sprang out from her crouching position in the bathtub piercing through the shower curtain and into the midsection of the intruder. The thrusting of the blade was almost sexual, in, out, in, out, in, out. And in moments, the blood of her attacker was coursing down her neck, past her heaving breasts, and running along her inner thighs. In addition to the detailed descriptions of the nipples and labia that my editor made me remove, there's also a lot missing here. The length, shape, and type of knife. The pounds per square inch being applied. The names of the organs Susan is eviscerating. But every male reader who read this book said they reread this scene more than any other. Rule 3 An action scene is its own story. Try to create an arc for the action, just like you would for your whole story. You should ratchet up the tension, you should culminate with a pivotal move, and you should have a resolution with consequences. In the Princess Bride's fight between Inigo Montoya and the Man in Black, we ratchet up the tension by having the characters revealing they were using their non-dominant hand. In my swashbuckling epic, Speak of the Devil, the sudden blizzard makes things harder for the protagonist, who is allergic to snow. 
you need a you need to culminate with some sort of pivotal move. Think James Bond realizing he can electrocute the henchman with his own hat. Think Indiana Jones realizing he can lure the henchman into the plane propeller. Think Riccio realizing he can punch through the henchman's stomach. The resolution should have consequences for both the plot and the character. The final action scene in The Fellowship of the Ring both splits the party apart and deepens Frodo's understanding of the corruptive influence of the ring on men. In my earlier example from Addressing in Disguise, Susan's fight with the intruder both convinces her and her husband to finally sell their house and leave Detroit, and Susan has to come to grips with the sexual gratification she gets from brutal violence. Rule 4. Get creative with objects and get familiar with firearms. Whenever I do book signings and conferences, I always advise all young writers to arm themselves heavily. Fans, critics, agents, business partners, bookstore owners, any of these people can turn on you in a moment's notice and you'll be glad you had a way to defend yourself. And as a bonus, you'll possess the proper verisimilitude when describing firearms in your writing. But be aware, guns can often kill dramatic momentum in an action scene. Once one character has a gun, everything stops and you'll often find you've written yourself into a corner. So disarm your heroes and villains. Get creative. Have your characters try to bludgeon each other with cinder blocks. Have them beat each other with socks full of batteries. In the aforementioned Bloodshot, protagonist Cable Anderkin, using his quick wits, grabs the feces of a recently deceased body nearby and shoves it into the face of his attacker. Unique action like this will earn you readers. That's all for today. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll leave you with this week's This Day in Literary History. See you on the next one.